Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. I've had a busy couple of weeks. I missed last week um, and missed all of you, uh, but I was doing some business travel <clears throat> and now I'm back and I've picked up a few interesting things. So in the coming weeks, you'll certainly um, see those on future Whitblock Wednesdays. But I thought today I would discuss a couple of works that have just walked, come, came into the gallery and they're by a very fascinating uh, Sosaku Hanga artist, um, Koyozumi, Koyozumi Kishio. And um, so, you know, we'll, we'll look at a couple of pieces of that are here that are different that represent different aspects of, of his body of work a really early period piece and then something that's sort of part of his most celebrated um, body of work um, but before we get into that i just want to welcome all of you i want to acknowledge that a lot of you now are watching these videos on youtube uh, of course this video was produced live here on facebook live um, but they are all downloaded and archived on YouTube, so you could easily access my other Woodblock Wednesday videos or my seminars. They're all listed on my website at collectingjapaneseprints.com. So if you go to Woodblock Wednesday or to the, the events page, you'll be able to access the videos. Um, they're all linked to YouTube, and you could go check them out. There are over a hundred Woodblock Wednesdays, uh, so there's a lot there. Uh, so for all of you who are interested in different aspects of Japanese prints and paintings, I'm sure there's something there for you. All right, so um, welcome, as I said, to all of you watching. Um, I have a couple of works uh, that I think might interest all of you. So without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. So I'm going to back up so you could um, see the table. I have quite a few things to discuss, but really uh, they all center on two prints. Um, and so i just quickly show you this one, uh, but we'll start with this work. And so again, these two prints were produced by the artist Koyuzumi. Kisho Ko Ko Koyuzumi, I'm sorry. <clears throat> His dates are... 1893, he was born, and he passed away in 1945, and um, many of you will find his work familiar, particularly the, the, the second work that we'll discuss in just a moment. But he was a Sosaku Hanga artist, and for those of you who are not familiar, Sosaku Hanga is a, it's a movement in Japan where the artist carved, printed, and conceived of, the, of his work of art entirely oneself. So Kyozumi Kyo, Kyo, produced these designs entirely um, for himself. They were self-driven. There was no publisher hiring him to produce certain designs. He did work with publishers in, in, the, in the future, and we could discuss that later. But in the, for the time being, he, he basically he was a profes professional artist who produced um, a very large body of Japanese prints. And, you know, he was sort of born into a family of artisans or artists. His um, family, his, on his father's side, they were, they were calligraphers and well-known painters. Um, and so Kirizumi went to school. He was well-trained um, as a woodblock carver as well. So he was, he was one of those artists like Horatska, who were really well um, educated in the actual carving of wood blocks. Um, Yamamoto Kanai also is an artist that comes to mind who, who was vel very well trained in wood block carving. And so, of course, this movement um, attracted him because he could express himself in the medium of wood blocks and print his designs. Um, and and he, he took to it um, quite well. And so in this design, this work um, is really early. Um, I've seen different dates attributed to this design, but it, it dates to about the 1920s. It's most likely pre-earthquake. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And it depicts these um, acrobats. Uh, and they're they're on these balls that are they're you're sort of balancing on this sort of um, 
beam here and there's another one here. This reminds me a little bit of Tabari Kogan's um, acrobats um, from, I think that's 1914 or 1913. And so this is a little bit later. The circus was certainly a subject that many Japanese print artists um, sort of um, highlighted in their work. They, they, there was a lot of interest in the circus uh, at this time, much like the other artists in Europe, like Picasso, Miro. Um, they, they were also very interested in the circus. Well, Koizumi, um, being young, and I believe he was in Tokyo at this time, I'm sure saw a, a, a circus that went through town. And it's really inspired him to produce a very whimsical and charming design. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, the work has kind of like a, a rough sort of quality to it. Very early Sosaku Hanga-esque. So you, you still see the area here of, of the, of the printing block where he you could still see the 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 almost like the gouges that are left from his carving out the block very expressive and you could still see the the lines here that show the hand of the artist carving the block it has a very uh, immediate quality quality in, in the the design it, 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 it has almost like a painterly effect in the sense that the the block looks very um, expressively carved, quickly carved, um, and so you know. I'm gonna zoom in. You could see the the detail of the lines and the pigments. The way that they're applied are kind of loose. You know, you could see the yellow coming out from the line here. It's not really kept within the fi confines of the uh, black outlines. The blue extends beyond the the, sh the lines of the shirt. And, and that's what you see in this early period of Sosaku Hanga. Um, the, the movement started with Yamamoto Kanai in 1904. And this is about roughly 15 years um, from when it was uh, started. And, and this is right early when uh, um, Koizumi went to, to study woodblock carving. He, he studied art he basically studied art in school and he studied painting, but also woodblock carving. And here you, you, you see this early work that almost has the kind of the quality of, of a early Hrotska. The colors are sparse. There's only three colors or so, three or four colors. Um, and so it's really about the carving and the design that comes through. Very expressive and I, I think it's very charming. We have here an early um, signature, Kisha Koizumi. It's kind of a stamp. You see that. You also see it in his later printing um, or later designs. And, and this is actually carved directly into the block. It's Kishi. And again, very early from the, from the 1920s. I'm going to zoom in one last time so you could see the, the printing. It's interesting, in many ways, when I look at this print, um, I don't automatically see, uh, you know, Japanese prints in my mind. It, it looks almost very European. Obviously, the subject matter is sort of inspired by the European-style circus that was traveling through Japan. Um, <clears throat> and, of course, the subject certainly creates the whole mood of the of the print but the colors and the printing that mean they they look very much like something out of a german expressionist um uh, body of work so you know this still has a very strong european quality to it um and i think partly it's because these artists were influenced by the german expressionists and other printmakers that were active in europe and they saw their artwork come into Japan as from the, the prints themselves, if not through exhibitions or publications. So the next work I want to talk about is this really striking woodblock print. Um, <clears throat> and this is one of his most celebrated designs. Um, you know, so Koizumi is one of those artists that was very active 
as a woodblock print artist, um, he was a professional uh, in the sense that he he lived off his art. Um, many artists weren't professionals. Um, many artists working woodblock printmaking, at, at least, did not um, have the same fortune as living off their their you know their skills as artists. So he was very active and produced a series of one hundred prints in the in the in the thirties. Actually he started the series in the late twenties. Um I think believe the, the series started in nineteen twenty eight and it and concluded in about nineteen forty. And the series was called One Hundred Pictures of Great Tokyo in the Showa era. And and so these prints, you know, he produced each design um himself. They were hand carved and hand printed. Um, and then later, I believe they got into the hands of publishers and, and they were later reprinted. But um, and, and they were not all reprinted, just certain designs. But in this particular case, this is one of those early printings done by the artists, but himself, um, Koizumi. And it showcases a really wonderful design of these we have a crowd of people gathered around a shoreline where these these wonderful fireworks are are going up and erupting in a in a in a really dark um dark sky and everything is illuminated the you could see the reflection of the fireworks the the bright yellow of the fireworks is reflected into the water um and, and, and so we have all of these people looking. Um, and in fact, the, the scene is, is it's interesting. It's, it's competing. To, uh, so many aspects of the scene is competing for the viewer's attention. Um, I, could, I can imagine myself being here and being drawn to the reflections of the, of the bright fireworks in the water. And then again, you know, looking up and capturing the, the fireworks as they erupt in, in that night sky. Uh, it's a, it's a stunning design, um, quite busy, but it works really, really well. And this design is, um, part of the Rugoku festival and it represents the month of July within the, the series. Um, and this was done in 1935. So it, it, it's not one of the earliest designs, but not one of the latest because the last work was done in 1940. And I will show you that the artist carved his, his seal here, but then there's a stamp right underneath. And that's important because the later printings of these lack the artist's stamp, um, which, you know, um, one would expect if the artist wasn't uh, participating in the production of the prints. Um, and so, again, this is such a stunning work. Um, and um, I think it's interesting. Well, well let me, before I go there, I just want to zoom in. I want to zoom in so you could see the, the amazing carving. You know, he's able to get different qualities of, you, know, you see here these three kimonos and how different they are. This woman's not even wearing a kimono. She's wore, wore dressed in a Western style uh, manner with a, a, a beautiful um, hat there. Then we have two ladies in kimonos. And then there's these figures. Um, this is a, a boy, and he's dressed in a school uniform. And the uniforms in Japan are modeled after the military. And, and here, this looks like a sailor's outfit, but in fact, he's, a, he's a, a dressed to go to school. And then we have here a few more uh, revelers uh, dressed to in kimono. And here we have a man dressed in a Western-style outfit with a hat there and then of course we have all these silhouettes crowded around the shoreline these wonderful lanterns overhead and then of course the 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 yellow which is such a main character in this design it's found throughout the the shoreline here in the water and then, of course, the fireworks as they go up. So it, it's such a beautiful work. And what I want to point out is that Rogoku, for most of you who are interested in ukiyo-e prints and are familiar with the work of Hiroshige, 
Hiroshige produced a series of 100 famous views of Edo. And Koizumi is certainly modeling his series of 100 um, you know, sort of new views of Tokyo in the Showa era um, from Hiroshige. He's taking his inspiration from Hiroshige. And here I have one of the, uh, this is a fantastic reference uh, for Hiroshige and for the series. I happen to have one uh, available in my bookstore if you're interested. And it illustrates the entire series oops, of 100 uh, prints by Hiroshige. And I'm not, I, I've done a video in the past um, on Hiroshige and on, on this particular print, in fact. And so, you know, if you're interested in learning more about Hiroshige and this, and this design, um, it's called Rogo, Fireworks at Rogoku, then um, I encourage you to check out that video. But for today's purposes, I just want to bring back this design and that conversation because Koizumi was very... Um, I mean, although he was a Sosaku Hanga advocate and, and, and pr uh, promoted self-carved, self-printed work, he was looking towards the past in some ways as for inspiration. And in this case, he was looking, as I said, at Hiroshige's amazing series of 100 Famous Views of Edo. Um, and, it, you know, in this design, it's number 98, it's from nineteen, uh, from eighteen fifty-eight. My my apologies, eighteen fifty-eight. It's called Fireworks of Rogoku, and there's the Rogoku Bridge. And what we see here, obviously, are some fireworks being set off, and these pleasure boats um, sort of, lay, you know, drifting and enjoying um, the fireworks. And if we zoom in a little bit, we'll see people on the bridge as well as on the boats. Well, this design. Um, of the fireworks at Rogoku Bridge pretty much was something that was um, cemented in the minds of people interested in Japanese prints. Even in, in Koizumi's time, um, you know, he could not escape the shadow of Hiroshige in, in many ways uh, because he was such an, an important print artist. So I think what Koizumi did is and being inspired by that series, um, in many cases, he reworked some things. And in this case, the location's the same. It's Rogoku. And in fact, here we have a bridge. Um, not to say that's the, the wooden bridge from the Edo period that showcases the, the fireworks. It's a different bridge. But the scene is very similar in the sense that we have a night scene with fireworks at Rogoku, and here's a bridge. And I assume that's the Rogoku Bridge, the contemporary version of it. And so in his, uh, in his case, he's revisiting this idea of this festival that occurs in July. And, but he's reworking it to showcase the same subject in a contemporary Oh, I'm hearing that there's no sound. How's how's it now, Wilson? You there? Someone give me a thumbs up on the sound so I can continue. Well, uh, well, I'll continue unless I, I. Okay, good. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I think the 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 headphones moved, and so as I was saying, this print uh, design 
was influenced by Hiroshige, as we just looked at that design from the fireworks of Rogoku Bridge. And although Koizumi was very staunch, staunchly opposed to Edo period style printmaking or, or Shinhanga of his time, so he was much more interested in producing prints himself, nonetheless, there's this connection. There's, there's a connection um, from the, the contemporary um, from 1930s looking back about 100 years later to Hiroshige's time. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and so um, moving on from the, the two prints, and we'll revisit this in just a moment, I want to highlight some other books that showcase this, um, this series. This book is a, a Japanese publication. It's entirely in Japanese. But it is one of the only books that highlights the entire series in color. In here we have, of course, I, I set it to the page of the, of the design we're discussing. Um, but it showcases the entire series. And it's in color. And it's kind of hard to find. Um, and so, But I happen to have a copy of this book in my bookstore available uh, for sale. So if you're interested please uh, visit my bookstore. Um, but this, this, this book is very important if you want a visual representation of the entire series. It's in color and the book's quite large. So, you know, it's, it's a good book. Uh, there is an English language book dedicated to the series. It's called Tokyo, the Imperial Capital, with Black Prints by Koizumi, 1928 to 1940. And um, this book, book does not illustrate the entire series, but there's essays in here that are quite valuable, in my opinion, um, that highlight the era um, when, when Koizumi created these prints. And uh, many are discussed, but, um, but I would say about a third. So you're still missing quite a few. Um, um, so if you're just looking for pictures, this is probably the best book available. But there's one last one. The, the Nihon no Hanga Museum in Amsterdam produced this exhibition catalog. Um, they highlighted the entire series. Um, I believe they have the entire series in the collection. And this book, uh, basically, it's a small book, um, probably the size of a Chuban size print, but it discusses Koizumi. Uh, there's some really help, there's a helpful essay in here. And of course, the the prints themselves are illustrated, all hundred. Now they're they're not all represented in large scale. This this design happens to be a full page illustration, but the others are not. Um, some of them are quarter page or half page illustrations. But this might be a good alternative. Uh, it's smaller, but the essay is helpful. But if it were me and you're interested in learning more about Koizumi, I would get all three. Um, why not? Uh, it's, it's possible. So um, I have this book as well as this book available at the bookstore. <coughs> Excuse me. So well, I'm just going to come back to the prints themselves to showcase how beautiful they are. Um, it's, it's just fantastic to be able to see these. I'm very, very privileged to be able to get them this week. It's been very cold here in Chicago for the last month, kind of gloomy and rainy. And so it's really nice to be able to be reminded of summer uh, nights with fireworks. So this design really um, helps uh, bring, bring me up and remind me that there are warmer, nicer days um, ahead. And of course, last, um, again, this is the first print we discuss. It's a very early work circus design by Koizumi from the 1920s. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me. Uh, and thanks for uh, pointing out, um, Wilson, I appreciate you uh, pointing out that the sound was gone. Uh, sometimes the headphones become loose at the, on, the, on the phone. And, 
and I lost you for a little bit. So I'm glad uh, we were able to fix that. So um, if you just if you're just joining us, I'm, I'll be uploading this video onto YouTube, or you could check it out on my profile on Facebook, um, and check out the first part of the the video. So I want to thank all of you uh, for joining me, and so we'll do this again next Wednesday on Woodblock Wednesday. And so if you haven't visited my website, it's CollectingJapanesePrints.com. We have an amazing selection of prints and paintings, as well as a bookstore full of wonderful, rare, out-of-print um, or hard-to-find reference books on Japanese prints and paintings. And there's a little bit of everything on the site. There's information for exhibitions all over the world, as well as an archive for these videos. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone. I hope you uh, pay us a visit. So. I will see you in a week of a next Woodblock Wednesday. Until then, thank you.